couple of weeks ago, the state of New York uh, announced that they were going to do uh, antibody sampling for COVID-19 antibodies. Um, they said they were going to test 3,000 people in the state of New York um, and do random sampling. Um, so in this assignment, I asked my students to um, think through some statistical issues in uh, how they should conduct the sampling um, and with particular attention to the a question of uh, how do the infection rates vary across the New York State population. Um, so this is just a short little video to uh, think through some of the issues, um, in particular um, a geographical variation. Um, and we're just going to look at a very simple case, uh, but I think simple cases can be instructive for um, thinking through how to tackle the, the more complex case. So the simple question we're looking at here is uh, what are the infection rates in New York City and Tompkins County, which is where Ithaca, New York is, and how much do the infection rates differ? Okay, so the study is uh, we're going to test N1 people in NYC um, and N2 people in Tompkins County under the constraint that the sum of N1 and N2 has to be 3,000. So uh, the issue we're going to think through is how many tests do we assign to New York City, which is N1, and how many do we assign to Tompkins County? Um, once they start the sampling, uh, this is what the data are going to look like. Uh, the notation I'm using for an individual data point is yi1. This is equal to zero if the ith person tested in New York City does not have the antibodies. And it's equal to one if the ith person in New York City does have the antibodies after testing. Um, yi2 uh, is the same thing but for Tompkins County. Um, so y2 is 0 if person i in Tompkins County does not have the antibodies, and it's 1 if that person does. Uh, some additional data that might be uh, useful for this problem. The population of New York City is about 8.4 million, and Tompkins County, of course, is much smaller. Uh, the population is about 100,000. All right, so the next step in thinking through how you're going to pick N1 and N2 is to think about how you're going to model the data um, and estimate um, any parameters in the model that you're interested in. So the model we're using, um, we're going to model YI1 uh, with the random variable capital YI1, which has a binomial distribution. Um, there's one trial for each person, of course, um, and P1 is going to be the probability of having the antibody um, in New York City. Uh, YI2 is the same thing, so it's also binomial. Each individual person is either a, a success or failure, so it's binomial one. Uh, but we're going to allow a different... Um, infection rate in Tompkins County uh, than in New York City. Um, this model choice and th these parameters are um, useful to our question uh, because we want to know what are the infection rates in New York City and Tompkins County and how much do they differ. So at the very least we need to pick a model um, that uh, allows the infection rates to be different in New York City versus Tompkins County. Um, and then all of, if you take the collection of all these random variables, we assume they're mutually independent. Um, that may or may not be a good assumption. Uh, one kind of hidden assumption in um, this model is that we're assuming that every person in New York City has the same probability of having the antibodies, and every person in Tompkins County has the same probability of having the antibodies, which is probably not true. This probably varies according to other variables like age and occupation.
Okay, but that's the model we're going with. One night, I mean, one nice thing about having a statistical model is that you have to lay out all of the assumptions, and then someone else can come along and say, um, "Well, I don't like this assumption. You should change it," and and that might influence the results. But at least we're being explicit about the assumptions that we're making. Okay, so that's the model. We have the data. Um, so we have the little y i's. So the way we're going to estimate the infection rate in New York City is we just take the sample average of um, the y i's. Um, so that's what's given here. All this means is this is just the proportion of um, people in New York City who tested positive for the antibody. Down here is the proportion of people in Tompkins County who tested positive for the antibody. Um, now, um, it's important if we want to think through what's the sampling distribution of this estimate, we have to write down the um, random variable version of the estimate. So this is called the estimator. Um, I'm using, it's kind of hard to distinguish, P is not the best letter, uh, but capital P1 is the random variable version and capital P2 hat is the random variable version. So just to reiterate a point from the class, this is just a number that you can write down on a piece of paper or type into a computer. This thing is a random variable that um, has a sampling distribution. Okay, so we're going to use uh, that random variable form to write out the sampling distribution. So the way this works is if you take n1 times big P hat 1, that's equal to the sum of the yi ones. These are independent binomials with the same uh, success probability, and therefore their distribution is binomial n1 comma p1. Same thing for the uh, data from uh, Tompkins County. Uh, if you add them up, that's a binomial n2 comma p2. And that allows you to work out um, the variance of this estimator for New York City. That's P1 times 1 minus P1 over N1. Um, for Tompkins County, it's P2 times 1 minus P2 over N2. And we can also work out what's the variance of the difference of the two estimators. Since we assume that all the data are independent, um, this binomial is independent of this one. So if you take the variance of the difference, that's just the sum of the variances. Um, okay, so this is useful because um, if we go back to the question that we asked, what are the infection rates in New York City? That's P1. And Tompkins County, that's P2. And how much do they differ? So there's various ways you could think about how much they differ. You could take the difference. So that's what I'm um, implicitly looking at here. I'm looking at the difference. Um, you could also look at the ratio uh, P2 over P1 or P1 over P2. Um, that's just a little bit, there's a little bit more complicated calculation to come up with the variance of the ratio, but you could do that if you wanted to go in that direction. Okay, so we have the question, the study, the data, the model, the estimate, and that allowed us to work out the sampling distribution. Now these variances depend on N1 and N2. Um, so how do we pick these numbers? Of course, that depends on our question. And if we think back to our question, uh, we want to know something about uh, P1 and P2 and P1 minus P2. So we want to pick N1 and N2 to make all of these quantities small. Um, but the nice thing is now is we have a formula for what these variances are. Uh, so we can just play around with the numbers uh, for N1 and N2 and then figure out uh, what the variance is and then settle on um, some choices that we like. Okay, so let's start with maybe um, a bit of a naive choice. Um, so the naive choice would be to pick N1 and N2 proportional to the pop population. So, of course, New York City has many more people. So if you were to pick N1 and N2 proportional to the populations, you would test 2,965 people in New York City, and you would test 35 people in Tompkins County. 
Now we can take these n1 and n2 and calculate the, the variance for p1 hat and p2 hat. I'm going to calculate the square root of the variance, which is equal to the standard error. Now to do this, if we look back at the formula, they not only these formulas not only depend on n1 and n2, uh, but they also depend on the probability of infection for New York City and Tompkins County. So in order to do this calculation, we have to suppose some values uh, for P1 and P2. So I'm going to make a choice here. Um, and you may have some other choice for P1 and P2, but I think these are somewhat reasonable given that the, the data that they did collect. So I picked P1 equal to 0 0.2. Um, I think probably around 20% people of in New York City have the antibodies. Um, and P2, which is the antibody rate in Tompkins County, I'm going to pick that to be 10%. So once we have all those numbers, we can plug things in. Um, variance P1 hat square root is 0.2 times 0.8 divided by 2965. Take the square root of that, you get 0 0.007. So that is the standard error for our estimate of the New York City um, infection rate. So this is a little bit less than 1% uh, if you put it on percentage scale. Um, for Tompkins County, you get something that's about 5%, 0 0.05. And you can also calculate the variance of the difference and you get uh, 0 0.051. So under this sampling scenario, where you test many more people in New York City than you test in Tompkins County, you're obviously going to get a much more precise estimate of the infection rate in New York City. We're going to know um, the infection rate within about one or one and a half uh, percent. So if the true rate is 20 percent, the answer we get is going to be probably between 18 percent and 22 percent. So that's pretty precise. For Tompkins County, on the other hand, where we only sampled uh, 35 people, um, we're actually going to be extremely uncertain about the infection rate. So the standard error is 0 0.05. If you do plus or minus two standard errors uh, around the hypothesized infection rate, that's between 0 and 20%. So that is a, a huge range. Um, basically, we know very little. If we sample 35 people, we'll know very little about the infection rate in Tompkins County. I actually did the binomial calculation. If you assume P2 is 0 0.1 and you sample 35 people, the chance of getting uh, zero positives is about 2.5%. So there's a non-negligible chance that you would um, get zero people testing positive out of 35 um, if the true infection rate was 10%. So that's maybe unacceptably large um, for uh, the question that we had. And so is this. So if we want to know the difference between the um, infection probabilities, um, it's about, the standard error is about 5%. So we'll know the difference within about 10% if you take twice the standard error. So this is probably not the best idea if you're interested in the infection rates in both uh, New York City and Tompkins County. So let's think about some other options. Um, another simple thing you might consider is setting the number of people tested in both regions uh, equal to 1,500. So if this is the case, um, then the standard error for the estimate of the New York infection rate is about 1%. The standard error for the infection rate in Tompkins County is slightly smaller. It's about 0.7%. And if you calculate the standard error for the difference, uh, this is about um, slightly more than 1%. So let's look at the difference between these numbers. So the New York um, standard error goes from 0.7% up to 1%. Um, so you do pay a small price uh, for sampling um, fewer people in New York City. Um, but the standard error for Tompkins County goes from 
down to 0.7%. So you pay a small price in New York City, but you get a big gain in accuracy in Tompkins County. You also get a get big gain in accuracy for um, the estimate of the difference. It goes from about 5% to 1.3%. Um, so if you're interested in both um, infection rates in New York City and Tompkins County, then this is obviously a much uh, better uh, design for your study. Then you, you get um, pretty precise estimates of um, both infection probabilities and a much more precise estimate of the difference. All right, let's think about some other options. Uh, one of them is you might uh, make N1 and N2 proportional to the infection rate multiplied by 1 minus the infection rate. Um, if you do this, uh, because of how the formulas work out, you get equal standard errors in both Tompkins County and New York City. They're both slightly less than uh, 1%. Um, and you get uh, 0 0.013 again um, for the standard error of the difference. So if you really cared about um, getting equally precise answers for the infection rates in these two locations, uh, this is probably what you should do. Um, kind of a little quirk here is I've, I've obviously written these out to three decimals. So this is 0 0.013 to three decimals. Um, and so is this. And this isn't a rounding thing. There, that this number is exactly equal to this number if you write it out to all the decimals. So I'll leave that to you for an exercise to figure out um, why that's true. But this number is actually exactly equal to this number. All right, so uh, one last thing. If, if your goal was to estimate the difference in the two infection rates, um, then you really want to make the variance um, or the standard error for the estimate of the difference to be as small as possible. Again, that supposing that's the goal. Maybe your goal is to get an accurate estimate of the ratio, for example. But supposing your goal is to get an accurate estimate of the difference, you want to make this quantity as small as possible. This is the standard error for the difference. All right, so how do you do that? Uh, first thing to note is that the, the optimal choice or the one that minimizes the standard error is the one is the same as the one that minimizes the variance. And if we take out and write out the formula for the variance, we get this uh, quantity. Uh, over here is um, 0 0.2 times 0 0.8. And the denominator, this is uh, New York City. Um, you divide by N1. Over here is 0 0.1 times 0 0.9 divided by 3,000 minus N1. Um, the reason for writing everything in terms of N1 instead of N1 and N2 is uh, because N2 is determined by N1. So what we're going to do is take the derivative of this expression with respect to N1, um, set it equal to 0, um, because we're trying to minimize this expression um, and solve for n1. So if you do that, um, if you take this equation and rearrange things, um, it turns out you get a, a quadratic function of n1. So these are just the steps to make it look like a familiar quadratic function. Um, so the coefficients in the quadratic function are uh, minus 0.07 on n1 squared, um, 6,000 times 0 0.16 uh, multiplying n1, and minus 3,000 times 0.16 multiplying uh, 1. So if you plug this into the quadratic equation, um, the two solutions you get are 1,714 and 12,000. 12,000 is obviously not the one you want because that's more than 3,000. So this is the solution you want which means N2 is 3,000 minus 1,714, which is 1,286. And if you plug these back into the expression, you get a standard error for the difference of 0 0.0127. And comparing that to what we got up here, um, if you write this out to a fourth decimal, it's 0 0.0129. So if you know a little calculus, you can do very, very slightly better than just equal uh, sampling, but 
that didn't take us very long. All right, um, so again, this is kind of how you think through uh, doing the sampling um, for this particular question that you had. Um, you may have a different question. Uh, for example, if your question is, uh, what is the total number of people infected uh, or total number of people who have the antibodies for COVID-19 accounting for the fact that um, different counties have different infection rates, then you're going to get a different answer for how you design the study. Um, so this is just how you, how you design it if this was your particular question.